we appreciate you guys joining us today uh, to talk a little bit more about uh, Euro's project. Uh, really, we here at Metaverse HQ, we, we love partnering with, with great teams, and uh, we are looking forward to hearing more about yours. My, my first question always and forever will be, um, you know, give us a quick little introduction to uh, exactly who you guys are on your team, uh, what you guys do, and then tell us a little bit about the kind of overall goal that you guys are hoping to achieve with your project, and then we'll kind of crack into a few uh, details as we go. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Should I go first? <laughs> go for it. Uh, yeah. So, hey, everyone. I'm KFX. I'm one of the founding members and also the community manager for Elysium Metagods. I'm really excited and, yeah, thankful for, for the opportunity to speak to you awesome people this evening. And yeah, a few words about me. I come from a background of digital marketing. Uh, I've been doing it for the past six years, during which time I also funded my own e-commerce brand that's doing pretty well in it for its second year of existence. And yeah, I, I guess I'm curious by nature. So I got caught up in the web free space sometime early 2021, but a series of unfortunate real life events forced me to step away for a while. And yeah, now I can probably say that starting January this year, I basically left everything behind and began my full-time journey in Web3 along with the amazing team here at uh, Elysium Metagods. Excited to be here, excited to have you guys listen in and yeah, excited to share a bit more about our project. Yeah, uh, thanks KFX. I'll just make mine brief as well. My name's Iman. I'm currently the marketing director for Elysium Metagods and I, I'm, I'm full-time in the Web3 space come from managing high-end fashion retail brands within South Africa. Uh, but yeah, out of that uh, and full-time in the Web3 space at the moment. Uh, so my name, is, yeah. my, my, uh, my name is Chivas. I'm the project lead for uh, PPA. Uh, apart from that, I'm, the, I'm part of the team from Elysium. Um, been in the Web3 space for a bit. Uh, I was the project advisor for BAU. So... Uh, yeah, I, I had I had quite some <laughs> uh, quite some experience build up in this space uh, regarding building and creating something for the for the community. Awesome. Uh, well, it seems like you guys are uh, encompassing a great team here. Uh, glad to hear uh, some things. Um, uh, you know, obviously, experience is key here, and, and we like to like to hear that when we put our money into projects, but. Uh, would you would you mind kind of giving us a short synopsis of, of kind of what um, you know Elysium Mega uh, Meta sorry Meta Gods is uh, about and kind of what you guys are trying to, to accomplish? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Shivas, you want to go? Or should no, I? I wanted you. I want to ask. <laughs> you, I wanted to ask you to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So as as brief as possible, we're we're building an ecosystem that you could say is is based on two pillars, right? The first pillar is a fun and engaging way to, to earn. And the second pillar, pillar is, of course, the token utility that we're going to give. So we, we basically started off wanting to build a game that, that rewards its players while also being fun with plenty of room for expansion. And, and after, yeah, countless brainstorming sessions and endless nights, we, we landed on the idea of using Greek gods in a strategy-based game where, where you can earn a, a native token we call god. Uh, like some something like particular here is that the game itself we, we will be developed in different seasons, and yeah, really cool to mention here and proud to mention here that we finished building the first season, which means that basically everyone that mints will be able to play the game immediately after the public sale. So that's kind of a general outline. I can go a bit more into details about the game if you if you'd like. And nope. of course, the the utility. <laughs> I would say nope. That's good. Uh, thanks for the space, guys. No, I'm kidding. Uh, of course, of course, we definitely, we definitely <laughs> want to. Uh, kind of the way I, I handle the the space is, um, I like to kind of just kind of uh, get a general overview for you guys, mm -hmm. and I kind of ask some questions and kind of uh, peel back the onion a little bit, get some conversations going, some some honesty and things like that. Uh, and then um, anything that I don't touch, obviously, please bring up. But um, uh, no. Uh, just, just kind of give you an explanation of kind of how I run things uh, in, in the space. But um, that's great. No, I, I'm excited because I, at heart, am a gamer. I love video gaming. I used to collect video games mm -hmm. a while ago. I've PC gamed my whole life. I've, you know, played uh, 
RTSs and strategy games all the time, and, and you know, looking at your website and looking at the kind of style of game, it does can it kind of give me that that uh, RTS um, almost uh, almost um, kind of base building kind of feel. Um, would you say that that there's a, a certain um, other than play to earn, there's a certain genre to your game or a certain kind of inspiration that uh, the game kind of steal not steals from but takes from uh, that that you guys want to talk to you a little bit more. uh yeah yeah it, it's not got it's not like we took inspiration for from a certain game like as you said i've been a gamer all my, all my life as well so uh, i'm just curious that the, one of my personal things was was to move to move elysium towards a turn-based strategy game you know like like heroes of might and magic was but yeah at, at the moment like we, we did some market research and found out that even though there are a lot of hardcore gamers in the space you know the the investors the people that, that actually invest in, in in projects like this are, are not really hardcore gamers yet right so it, it was like brought to our attention that that mo- most people are just looking for a fun way to earn you know while they invest and yeah for for a lot of utility for for their token so something like that so the first season and the first iteration of the game if you might say it is going to be a web browser game and it's going to be a strategy type game in the terms that you're going to have like multiple moves you could make of staking and staking on on different on on different battlefields because basically the game itself will have like you're, you're going to have two main options of playing it right so there's going to be a staking game which in a nutshell will offer three different staking options or battle positions as we call them and yeah, each of these battle positions will come with their own risk and reward mechanisms. So there's a bit of a touch, like a, a bit of a betting touch over there. And yeah, the second main option of playing a game will be, uh, we call them tournaments. Uh, and they'll be like a play and earn off-chain component that, that will basically provide the, the, the player with, with, with daily quests. And as the players complete those quests, they advance on the leader, leaderboard and win amazing prizes. So this is, this is on brief, like what type of game we're launching right now. But yeah, we, we have a long-term vision. And uh, yeah, besides building this fully functional ecosystem, uh, like we want to develop Elysium into an open world game where, where you can interact with your 3D avatar and later on immerse yourself with VR. That's awesome. No, I, I love, love to hear that, you know, um, more is going on in the background than just, you know, um, w- one particular instance, obviously building out a, a whole world and, and, and more than just one game. Um, that's awesome. Uh, so, so love to hear that. Um, my question uh, is going to be, so, um, you know, the, the, the Metagod NFTs uh, come out and they'll be yielding um, the God token. Um, is there, is that your access to play the game as well? Or um, is this going to be a game where you don't necessarily have to hold an NFT to play, but you, um, you know, that's your best way to earn, earn God token. Curious to hear about the, the, the kind of uh, mechanics there. Yeah, awesome, awesome question. Uh, in the beginning, because because we're looking, you know, we're, we're looking to 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 slowly build a healthy user base and, and get proper adoption and develop the game based on our holders' feedback. Uh, the NFT is indeed going to be like the key to playing the game. But uh, further down the line, of course, we we plan to open the gates of Elysium to everyone, you know. And not even that, like even our marketplace, because we're going to have an in-game marketplace. We plan to make it available, you know, viewable for the general public. So you don't necessarily need to have a metagod to interact and see what you can find in the marketplace, right? So yeah, in the first stages, is going to be like mandatory to have a metagod because it's going to be, everything is going to revolve around the staking game, more or less. But in the future, the, the, that's not going to be a requirement. Okay, right on. Um, that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and then, you know, we, we mentioned, um, you know, god token uh, earlier and obviously with the meta god um uh, nft coming out uh mm-hmm. soon um what does that process look like to to um be able to earn that token and how does that play uh, into the game factors as well versus staking or not staking can you play the game without staking how does how does that kind of work you can't really play without staking in a, especially in the first season because yeah, that's that's like the, the the basic way of earning the God token. So you got the three staking games that are different. You you got a, a defensive position with which basically just generates the God deal that's encrypted in your in, in your meta God, and then you have other two positions that that have risk and reward factors, 
So, for example, if, if you stake on, on, on the frontline offensive, uh, when you decide to claim your yield, you're going to have like a chance. If you, if you win or lose, decided by a randomizing algorithm, you're going to have a chance to, to claim either 50% more God tokens than your basic yield, or you lose 50% of the God tokens. So this is kind of a, the risk and reward factor. And of course, you're going to earn in the tournaments. There's going to be an entry fee, and yeah, as I said, you advance on the leaderboard, and at the end, there's also there's also going to be prizes in the God token. So these are kind of the two ways of earning, especially now in the first season. Okay, and and yeah, are so those... it's a bit of a step by step process. There. So the first step is you stake, um, and that's for everybody. So everybody everybody can start earning then. Also, the people that don't want to play. I mean, there's there's quite a lot of investors that don't have time to play a game uh, but of course they still want to benefit from the eco benefit from the ecosystem um, and once everybody stakes and everything is recorded on the blockchain then you can choose hey do I want to um, get more active towards playing and yielding instead of uh, remaining passive okay that makes it makes a lot of sense and, and what um, you mentioned the, on the blockchain uh, what what are we leveraging an L2 here uh, or, or is this uh, just going to be on the Ethereum chain? Uh, the staking part is, is going to be on, on layer one and the tournaments are going to be completely off chain. And even if, uh, if even if the staking game is, is going to be on layer one, like the way the game is designed, like I was mentioning multiple actions earlier, earlier. So, Basically, let's say you have multiple meta gods, you have a lot of weapons, you can stake them on different battlefields, you can pair them with different weapons. And all these actions you do are getting queued up, you know, are getting added to a queue. And when you when you hit the, when you decide like, this is my strategy, this is not all the actions I want to take, you just hit a button and everything, all those actions go, go into the smart contract w within one transaction. So you just have to pay that one small gas fee for the interactions. I guess this is a part why, why it's a, strategy-based games because you need to have a proper strategy to, to minimize like the, the, the fees you pay and to maximize the, the gold yield. Okay, that, that makes a lot of sense. And um, just curious uh, for the future, is that something that you guys are, are looking to leverage the technology on uh, of a layer two or just right now the, the idea is just kind of build the game out and then you know c continue and, and, and getting people involved? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Everything is possible here, right? So the... The way we chose for that, that off-chain, on-chain mechanism right now is because um, it has all the safety measures needed. Um, mainly people still like to stay within ETH. Um, and, and it just allows people to participate without having high gas fees because the, the actions that you actually need to do are quite limited uh, because those staking actions where you choose positions, um, it's something you'll do once every while and it's not something you'll do on the daily where the tournaments are, are actions that you need to do on the daily so you need to make sure people don't have to pay gas every time they do that um, and once layer 2 progresses in itself and the game progresses if those two match then yeah uh, I definitely think that, that that's something we'll keep looking at um, I, I think this is regarding everything you have to you have to always be open to uh, whatever the free ship brings technology wise, whatever the market demands. And you need to be able to pivot there um, or just. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree with you. Uh, and, and I love to see the, the, you know, the willingness to, to, to do that forward and also kind of sticking with your strategy. When you mentioned the very beginning, this is uh, less of a game for hardcore gamers and more for uh, people, you know, in the space who, um, you know, like to game and want to have fun, but also, uh, you know, find fun ways to earn. Um, so that I think, I feel like that strategy is a little, a little different and then plays into how you guys have this set up as well. Yeah. Um, come, because that's, that's one of the things I usually have, especially like, so I told you for my part, I also advise other projects, right. And I speak to a lot of projects, uh, whether it's for advisement or whether it's for collapse. And when they build games, one of the first questions I ask is, what are you going to do for someone like me, like a, a passive earner or a passive player? Because they usually have this leaderboard and everybody that's really high up the leaderboard earns prices. But uh, I don't have time to do that. But at the same time, 
I am that investor that's going to sweep your floor. I am that will that has the money to actually um, to actually sustain your project. And the reason I'm that person is because I, I spend so much time working that I don't have enough time playing. So if you don't take care of that group, um, then you're missing out on an entire market. I, no, I love that. It's a strategy that I think that a lot of people ignore in the sense that they think it's like, a, I feel like they may almost think it's kind of a dirty part of, of blockchain gaming. They're like, well, we, we can't necessarily like speak to it or preach to it. But I, I love that, you know, that you guys are, are honest and, and open and like, hey, this is like, this is the group that, you know, <laughs> funds the game and the development. So like, uh, so, so I love that. And no, that makes a lot of sense. And I'm, I'm that kind of person. I don't have time to sit down and play, you know, this some this super in-depth game. Like, again, like I remember Axie Infinities, people, you know, were hiring people from other, you know, countries to play the game for them and, and grind out. Uh, and, and, you know, there's just normal, like normal people just don't have time for that. But, uh, you know, an, an investor, uh, you know, has time to, to do, you know, kind of the minimal things uh, on that. And, and I love the way that the, the strategy for the way you guys have developed this has worked. Um, one thing I wanted to kind of, uh, kind of pivot over to is, you know, obviously this game has been, uh, is being developed and, and, and it's, it's launching soon. And the main part of it is these, these Olympians. Uh, and I'm, you know, looking over some of the traits and some of the models and the, the artwork's incredible. I mean, uh, you guys have really done a great job. Can you speak a little bit to, um, you know, the, the artwork and, and who's helped you guys kind of design some of these 3d assets? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. would love to. It, it's one of our, the things we pride ourselves with because, because one of the founding team members is actually an entire design studio we have here in Romania. They're, they're called Static VFX. And yeah, they have like uh, notable experience. They, they've worked like uh, for CG and animation for Ant-Man, for Marvel's Ant-Man, and of course other high-end commercials and stuff. So we got like more than 10 designers or 3D designers constantly working on the collection and on everything like related to the game. Awesome. No, it's great to see that you guys have some industry experience uh, to, to help you guys with it. Um, you know, obviously the, the, the Olympians are one thing, but, um, you know, looking on the website, it looks like, you know, we had like a, a pre-sale of, of the meta pass um, that, that kind of uh, gave you some, some benefits uh, as well as, you know, um, being able to mint one of the meta gods, but it looks like coming soon, we have a, a few things that, that, that'll be a part of the game that, that, that people will be able to mint as well. Uh, weapons, land, buildings. Um, can you speak a little bit more to that and how that plays into the gaming mechanics as well? Yeah, Heman, would you like to? You're always touching point on the Celestial Passes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for giving <laughs> me the chance to speak. Whenever there's, us, there's all three of us up here, we all have to share. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, the, the Celestial Passes, they... We minted those uh, late Feb, you know, gave it opportunity for our early investors to invest. I see there are a couple of those people within the within the chat, so that's awesome to see. Uh, so yeah, so we gave them an early opportunity to invest so that we could progress the pro, so that we can go through with the progress of the the project quicker, you know. Uh, so yeah, all of that all of that ETH went straight back into the project of the development, and that's where we are today. Those those benefits of holding those passes, uh, this. Three main ones. The first one would be they've been generating a hundred god token every day since the beginning of March, uh, which they'll be able to use. You know, it gives them a bit of an upper hand. They'll be able to mint weapons earlier. They'll be able to uh, make use of the marketplace earlier. So that's some cool benefits for them as well. And I guess uh, have a, a a bit extra spare funds to enter tournaments and stuff. You know, um, the second and third would be uh, to, they get a free meta god mint and they also get a free land mint. So those are the top three benefits of currently holding a Celestial Pass. It is listed on our OpenSea at the moment. And, uh, you know, they've also been able to provide a lot of inputs of the progress of the project. They've been uh, helping us pick out buildings, pick out names for these buildings, giving us uh, their opinions on certain things. They're also currently testing the beta version of the game as we speak, uh, a select few of them. So there's some real cool benefits from that. And they've been a key part of our core community pretty much since the start. And they've seen our project grow. Uh, which is really, really awesome. So 
yeah, uh, that's just a bit about the celestial past. Shiva, I saw you unmuted. Do you want to say something? Yeah, I figured I'd take the part for the weapons and the uh, land. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so because uh, uh, land is uh, season two, and the same applies to weapons, uh, and we're developing the game season by season, um, we have some ideas around it, uh, but we're going to bring these back to the community. So I'll, sh I'll share a bit of that alpha here to uh, see how that drops because it is interesting. Um, so the, the, the weapon speaks for itself. They're, they're boosters um, that can help you in your tournaments and in your challenges and uh, can upgrade your chance of winning. Um, currently, the tournaments that you're going to have, they're mainly uh, PvE, but it's going to be PvP at some point. Um, so by having those weapons, you're going to have a benefit uh, where you can have a higher outcome of success. Uh, but of course, we have to tear all these things together so to make sure that whether you that when you battle someone, you know you're battling people in in, in fair tears, and you're not just this big big whale dominating everybody else. We don't want that system where only the whales benefit because they have the best weapons, the best gods, and everybody else just gets left behind. And um, regarding the lands and the buildings, the way we thought about it, but um, as I said, it's still work in development. But the way we thought about it is that these tournaments take place in uh, in certain places along the map or certain uh, within certain arenas, you might say. So whoever owns the arena, for instance, they can get a part of the... And people need to pay God token to enter the tournament. So whoever owns the arena, they can get a part of the, of the God token that has been paid by others to fight in that specific arena just to let everyone know who's listening and then again this will be recorded uh right now they, they're referring to the celestial mint pass with all the benefits it has uh currently sitting at 0.454 eth on the on o open c and not a lot listed too so that's always good to see um so uh it's obviously good when the community doesn't want to give up the goods uh to for cheap <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that, that's the biggest compliment you can get when people are saying, hey, this is how I value your project and what you're building. Um, and if that's, uh, after a few months, if that's like two, three X, what, let's say the, the, the base sale value is, then that's a, a clear indication that you're doing something right. For sure. And actually, it brings up a great, uh, like point there is, um, you know, obviously an important part of, of NFT projects and, and, and especially NFT gaming is going to be that community that you build. And, uh, you know, obviously you guys have been developing this for a while now. What have you guys done in, you know, to, to build up the community to be, um, you know, um, the kind of community like this uh, and, and kind of give us a little insight on how, on how the community runs uh, so far. Yeah, so we, we, we've chosen um, a strategy here that um, wasn't based on FOMO or too much hype, but was more based on, on how to do something in an organic way where um, you ask for support. Um, so it started off with the passes where we just said, okay, we're going to have a, a pass sale as a, let's say, an initial funding round. Um, where we're going to benefit the early investors, but we're not going to limit the sale to a certain amount. We're not going to have a minimum or a maximum. We're just going to see how many people are willing to buy this uh, and then use that capital to further develop. So that was the first start months ago. And from that point on, we, we, um, we felt like the best way to succeed for us is to have a community that's, um, that's stronger, that's more more interactive with each other, um, apart from an extremely big marketed out community. So um, we, we wanted to keep the Discord small, we wanted to keep it clean and we wanted to keep it organic. So we've just been 
pruning everybody out that um, is extremely inactive. Uh, and I'm not talking about someone that hasn't said something in a few days because, you know, we all have other things to do. Everybody has their own life and you got to respect that. Uh, you can't expect everybody to be as active, uh, but you do want people in there that feel some sort of commitment towards the project and some sort of bond and are not just sitting there for, for no reason where you at some point have a discord with, I don't know, 25, 40, 50 K members and nobody's doing anything. So we went for that organic build. We kept it really small, um, focused on, on doing a lot of community events, a lot of games focused on building a bot already uh, that we have in our discord, this really cool Ambrosia bot where you get this Ambrosia token for interacting within the community, whether it's playing games, chatting, um, that you can then spend uh, in the Ambrosia shop that we also built where you can already purchase some NFTs on whitelist spot. So that, that marketplace concept, we tested it out within the Discord with Discord currency, as you might say, uh, just because it already rewards those who are there and building with us, right? And there's no reason to wait for that until after the mint. So that's, that's the strategy we took. And now that we're close to mint, we're sitting around 15 K members in discord with average five K online. And, and we feel that we got to that point where we got big enough to release the product uh, and have enough users for it, but still small enough to keep it within a close family circle, as you might say. Awesome. And I love the, the use of the word ambrosia as that is the food of the gods. So I love, you know, just the, hearing people who play into the fact that, you know, hey, this is a game about gods. <laughs> so it's great, great to hear, um, which actually kind of brings me to my next question. Uh, you know, I feel like every good game, uh, you know, whether or not it focuses on, you know, p passive earning or, you know, grinding. Uh, has to have a good storyline, has to have a good lore, has to have good backgrounds. Can you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, the lore, the lore writing and, and uh, you know, how you guys have that affect the game? And, and is that there's something I know a lot of games are starting to let the community kind of kind of drive the storyline or at least impact the storyline uh, somehow? Is that something that, that you guys have looked into or is this something that you guys are just going to write and, and, and have it be, uh, you know, kind of the story for the game? Yeah, so uh, I'll tell you a bit about the way how we're doing it, and KFX can tell you the current lore. So uh, what we've done, we've um, added two professional lore writers into the team that have written uh, the base lore as it is. So the community has something to build from, and we put in some fundamentals there. Um, and what we're planning to do is, after Mint, having these small roundtable sessions, with our community to further develop that lore as we go into the seasons because uh because it, it is a community built game in, in that direct in that sense that we want them to have input we feel like that's that's the best way to go about it to have those actual story writers come into the discord sit down with the holders and um, get input on how they would like to see it unfold next Awesome. Uh, that, that's great to hear. Um, the, the, the other aspect is obviously, you know, we have the, the gameplay mechanics uh, that you mentioned. Uh, and and we, we talked a little bit about tournament playing. So, so PvP, um, is, is there any elements of like team building or any kind of like, and I've seen some, some of the PvP games, uh, or sorry, the, the PD, PDE games um, kind of involve people, kind of split them up into teams. Um, so like, okay, you have blue team, red team, yellow team, and, and you know, there's a constant battling, uh, uh whatnot. Um, is that something that, that you guys have, or is this kind of a, a P to P type of play style, uh, you know, tournament or not tournament? Okay. Fix you want to take it or you want me to do it? Okay. It's all good. <laughs> I can take it. Uh, like the, the tournaments are going to be, be PVP in the only sense of you're competing against other players on the leaderboard, right? So uh, as we move further on on the roadmap, 
uh, as, as Shiva says, I think in, in season three we, we're planning to turn it into more PvP like, and yeah, probably at that point it it would be an option to to proceed as you suggested. Yeah, so the final vision here is to create this open world, right? This open world game where you can mm-hmm. run around with your metaverse, uh, sorry, with your avatar into Elysium. Um, and then everybody is going to have their lands. Everybody's going to have home bases. Um, and if possible, um, and we have the technical skills for it within the team. Um, but we, like I said, we also need to see whether it fits within the community because you, 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 you don't know how that's going to develop yet. You need extremely, um, you need, you need little groups within the community for this to function. Uh, and you need to make sure that people are, that aren't that active within the community or don't feel that bond with certain other people that they feel like, hey, let's connect together and become a small raid party or something, that they still feel like they can benefit as much as the ones that are able to create their own little parties. So I think yeah. those are things to watch. I think it's one thing to be fanatic about a game. It's another thing to be fanatic about being a part of a community within a community in a game. So like being a part of a faction or being part of a, a team or, or something like that. So I, I definitely understand that and, and see, see where you're coming from there. Um, uh, the, my next question is, you know, okay, we, we, we're, we're, we got Mint coming soon for Metagods, right? Uh, I want to know a little bit more about the timeline there. And then what can we look at coming forward on the roadmap and kind of when are some of these dates and things going to be implemented? Kind of like, okay, Mint's here. Gameplay starts here. Can you give us a little bit more insight into to where 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 we are with there? Uh, I'll, okay, KFX, I'll let you take it. I don't want to have to stage too much, and I know you have all the details. Sorry, could could you please repeat the question really quick? I was checking out our community. I got pinged. Sorry. <laughs> oh, you're perfectly fine. No, no, no. That that stuff happens. I uh, just uh, can you speak a little bit more to you know, you know the mints coming up, uh, kind of the mm-hmm. mint schedule. Mm-hmm. And the schedule of the roadmap uh, here for this this next uh, uh, stage of things, and kind of when the game uh, will be launched. Can you speak a little bit more to that, and kind of give us a rundown of, of what that looks like? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So the game will be launched immediately after the sale. You know, immediately after we have the public sale, it's already ready, and uh, the, the setup is being tested by uh, with, with a few of our holders. And yeah, we don't have like an exact timeline. Uh, how much season one is going to last, when when are we going to move to season two. But uh, all I can say that the current main structure with the 5,000 Metagod supply has been calculated to provide the necessary budget for development and for moving forward to season two. And, and I think that's for the next eight months. Yeah, if I'm not correct, if I'm not mistaken. So it, it, there's no fixed timeline. And as Shiva said, like the plan is to, to continuously develop uh, lore-wise and even game mechanics-wise with our community based on their feedback, based on what they like. So but it could do, take we do like... some things right there, KFX. I mean, we have the marketplace coming out directly after Mint. The game itself is going to be playable um, directly after the Mint. We're going to have the... Oh, no, I can't say the other. We're going to have something else coming out within the first month after the Mint that's going to be... that I can't speak to yet, but that's going to bring some value back to the holders. Yeah, yeah, I was just trying to say there's no fixed there's no fixed timeline for it. But yeah, there are gonna be like different different things that are gonna drop, like including the weapons, tournaments. I think that's gonna last for uh, two or three weeks after the after the public sale, tournaments are gonna step in. So during that time people will have time to, to yield their god tokens to be able to participate and yeah. And the marketplace uh, is gonna be immediately as well, uh, as she was said. Right on. Okay, great. So it sounds like there's a lot to look forward to after uh, the mint uh, mint out there. Uh, and, and just so I'm, I'm clear and, and, and the community is clear, how many of these gods will be uh, mintable? So the total supply is 5,000. And from these 5,000, uh, 400 are reserved for, for our Celestial Pass holders because only 400 were, were ever minted. And yeah, so I guess you could say the, the mintable will be 4,600. Yeah, something like that. 
okay, wow. So yeah, so there, there's, there's, uh, and just in terms of like uh, comparable, in terms of uh, quantity, it, it seems like um, you know it, it's it parallels a lot with like ether orcs, for instance, was like a five k uh, mint. So for anyone out there that doesn't know how that works, the uh, the price of those things are, are pretty high because there are so few of them. Uh, so so that's a that's that's a awesome little insight there. Um, so uh, that's kind of all the questions that I had to drill into, but I'm sure that's not everything that you guys wanted to kind of clear the air on about the game and, and, and things coming up here for the Mint. So I'll, I'll give you each just a, a, like a last um, kind of um, thing to kind of share with us uh, and kind of uh, maybe maybe something maybe we didn't talk about or something you wanted to reiterate. Uh, and then we'll open it up to a few questions from the audience if anyone has one. Cool. I guess we touch point on, on most of the things. I'm not sure if you missed anything, guys. Um, yeah, I think that uh, I think we said quite a lot. Um, uh, ah, there's I one think... thing. There's one, one thing that just crossed my mind. I think it's really cool because it's basically dedicated to, to all the DJs out there. In, in the marketplace, we, we were mentioning that there are also going to be loot boxes and you could find all sorts of Amazing stuff in there. I don't know from NFTs, super rare NFTs, and even if. So yeah, that's something to look forward to. That's awesome. Anytime that you can snag some ETH uh, <laughs> from uh, from playing a game, that's always cool. So no, that's that's great to hear and awesome. I'm glad uh, uh, we got to, to hear more about it. And it's a very it seems like a very exciting game that I'm I'm, I'm excited to learn a little bit more about uh, by kind of playing it. Uh, folks out there if you have a question go ahead and request to speak uh if you don't um you know we'll just we'll kind of hover here for a minute if we don't have any questions that's fine no big deal um like he said we covered a lot so um, all understandable but um i will say uh from from our side metaverse hq it's a, it's a pleasure uh talking to you guys uh more a little bit more about the game and learning more about it and and working with you guys as a partnership so we really do appreciate that very very much Thanks, thanks yeah. for having us. We, we really appreciate it. It was it was a pleasure speaking. <laughs> yeah, that awesome. goes both both ways indeed. Mm-hmm. Uh, we enjoy working a lot with uh, you guys, but and I, I believe that's what the space is about, right? It's about people coming mm-hmm. together, working together, building bridges. Like I said, we're gonna have this this bloody bear market, and in a way, it's awesome because the builders are gonna be here. Uh, those who are not here to build are gonna go. Uh, or going to be flooded out, and which will then strengthen the the NFT market. We also had people in the Discord asking us, "Hey, um, how do you feel about continuing your mint, even though the market is like this?" And we told them the same: like um, those who do not fear the the bear will uh, flourish during the bull. I love it. Love love that. Uh, and you're absolutely right. I think that's like a, a good takeaway here. And again, kind of going back to what we talked about here at the very beginning is that I feel some of the best innovation that hits the NFT space, the crypto space happens in bear markets. And I'm not saying we're in a bear market. And I know some people will be like, well, you're stupid because we are. But, uh, you know, certainly when the sentiment is bear, uh, there's always some positivity to look forward to that it's not all about profit gain profit loss immediately it's about building things that can provide those things long term in the future so uh love love that that's where your all's mindset is and i i think i agree with you guys that don't don't slap the brakes now keep keep pumping keep keep building and and, and keep uh, going with the project because i think you guys uh have built uh enough things to, to make this very successful so uh, again we appreciate it love the conversation look forward to your all's mint can you give us a quick date real fast as we wrap up uh, so people know it's going to be either 16th, 17th, or 18th. Uh, final date is going to be announced on Wednesday, Thursday this week. Um, still looking at the NFT calendar a bit to see what other mint drops are there, but something around that time. Excellent. And I'm sure the best way to determine that is to join your all's Discord. Uh, and you can find their link tree and their Discord. The Discord is Elysium Metagods, or at Elysium Metagods. It's E. L Y S I U M Metagods M E T A G O D S. Guys, thanks again. Everyone have a great Monday and let's let's give a little bit of positive sentiment into this market. But you guys have a great yeah. uh, day, great night, and uh yeah, let's go. <laughs> thanks for hosting. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for hosting.